I'm back in the USA for the first time in over eight months and I thought what better way than to just sit down and critically rank every single city I've been to in the past eight months. Let's see what city comes out on top as my favorite. If you guys know me, maybe you have a hint or two, but I'm not gonna hold back guys. I'm gonna be pretty honest. I, you know, this is my opinion. I don't want it to be one of those tier lists where everything is S tier and wow, everything is so lollipops and bubble gum or whatever the saying is. But I'm gonna be pretty honest, okay? I, I don't want to offend anyone, but if your city gets a D tier, I'm sorry, okay? It's skill shoot. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. This is my opinion and I'm, I'm pretty picky when it comes to places and cities and kind of places I enjoy. So we're gonna be honest with ourselves. It's 20 different cities um, I've been to in the past eight months. I feel like I give pretty good feedback. Some I was only there for like a day or two. Some I was there for 70, 90 days out of the eight months. So first off, we have Dusseldorf, which is going straight to the C tier. It was extremely cold. I hate, no, I'm just kidding. Um, Dusseldorf's cool. I have friends there, but listen, if you wanna know anything about me, it's that if a place isn't 90 degrees and warm or 30 degrees Celsius and warm, it's 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 immediately C tier. Did Dusseldorf get kind of screwed over by uh, immediately being November? and gloomy and two hours of sunlight probably but i do like more mega city more walkable cities more central cities i also said a bratwurst was the same thing as a hot dog and so germany probably also put me probably even the d tier for even saying that so i think it's it's fair <laughs> But I love my friends there, and I hope they don't disown me for putting their city in C tier. In the grand scheme of things, maybe I'll end up moving it up a bit. We'll see at the end of this, okay? Next up, we got Amsterdam. We got the bikes here. I'm not sure where I want to put Amsterdam. I was only in Amsterdam for a day to meet some GeoGuessr homies. We walked the whole day, so I feel like I saw a lot of the city. Um, I'm putting Amsterdam in B tier. And I feel like a lot of people probably will put Amsterdam in like an S or A tier. But again, I'm pretty different on what I like about cities. It's it's more of just I like I like more bigger developed cities, which might be ironic with a couple of my listings you see later. I was just only there for a day, so this take this with a grain of salt. I just kind of wanted to answer them on there. All right, next one, we got Sevilla, Spain. Shout out to Star Wars, if you guys know, you know. So Sevilla is my favorite European city I've been to so far. After I was in Germany for a month, I was like, I need to get to warmth. And I immediately just Googled the warmest place in Europe at the time. And I went to Sevilla, Spain, lived there for 30 days. And it was amazing. It's right on the river right there. It's beautiful. The architecture, the people there, Spain culture in general is so slow and relaxed. The lifestyle there is so interesting. And I just thoroughly enjoy it. Like every single day I had in, in Spain, specifically, Sevilla. I went to like a couple of cities south too as well, but not enough to I don't think accurately judge. And people always ask me like, what do you like about Sevilla? There's just sometimes you just have, there's like just energy in like places or like just places that you feel like you resonate with. Kind of hard to describe. All I would do is I would wake up every day. Back in that month, I was really grinding Cambodia for some reason. So I would, I would play Cambodia and then like walk to like a park and sit on the river and just like chill. And that's just like the coolest thing. I, I love to do things like that. It's super quiet. It wasn't too touristy and it's just beautiful. It's one of those things where you just have to experience it, I think. But Sevilla, Spain, that's an A tier for me. All right, and then we got. But Madeira, or let's just go with Madeira as a whole. Funchal, I guess, is the main city there. But so so I, I can't do it, guys. Um, yeah, that was really cringe. I'm sorry. I don't know where I want to put uh, Madeira. Madeira is S tier when it comes to most beautiful place I've ever been to in my life. It's the most beautiful. But I think this tier list is more of like long term slash livability slash grand scheme of like everything taken into account of my enjoyment. I mean, Madeira was I would I would go on hikes. I went on like the same hike towards this mountain northeast side like at least three or four times just because it's most beautiful scenery ever. Gorgeous mountains. I love mountains. I freaking love mountains. I went well watching. I saw a bunch of sea lions. I saw one city line. They said that was pretty rare. I went and bought basketball and played some basketball like most days just to get some exercise. All right, yeah, I'm definitely rusty. <laughs> That's his fifth. Throws up a haymaker and makes um, it. Beautiful weather. They also had really good barbers in Madeira. It's always a plus. The thing about Madeira I didn't like was that it was very car dependent, which is like, it's because it's an island. So I had to rent a car. I freaking hate driving. I haven't driven a car in like six years. So that scared me to death because I just like public transportation or walking places. So having to have a car was kind of sucky. Um, where did I put it? I'm gonna put it in, in Northern B tier. Listen guys, I'm being critical here. Okay. So I think I enjoyed it more than Amsterdam. Also there for 29 days more, but yeah, beautiful. Good architecture. I love Portuguese pavement, Portuguese building buildings, roofs. I love islands. I never went swimming, actually. I also never even saw like the, the meme Ronaldo statue. I did see one. That was pretty cool. But most of my time in Madeira, I just like walking and doing hikes, seeing a bunch of different parts of the island because it's freaking beautiful. Highly recommend it. High B tier. But I don't put it above Sevilla because I just love Sevilla a lot in terms of livability. These next one I did pretty quickly. Rome. We got some Rome trees here below Amsterdam. I don't know. It was chill. Very historic. I don't have really that many two experiences about Rome. Actually, I have one story. Marco from Airbnb, if you're watching this, I don't like you. I got scammed on the Airbnb in Rome. I don't want to get into it. Ooh. 
If, if someone says that their internet speed is up to 100, what internet speed do you expect? Not 0.1, right? Oh, 0.1 is up to 100. No, it's not Marco. I went to Naples. Naples pizza is an S tier, but I'm putting Naples actually below Dusseldorf in terms of cities I've been to. Yeah, maybe even D. I'm putting Naples in D tier. That's kind of harsh, I know. Not my thing. But also, Venice is also a D tier city, in my opinion. Very touristy. Also, have you guys seen that meme of Venice looking like Patrick the Star? <laughs> Every time I look at the satellite imagery from uh, Venice now, I literally think it's just Patrick. But yeah, good food. Venice felt too touristy. It just didn't really feel like a city to me. Listen guys, this is also just like all opinionated. I'm sure people had different experiences and people value different things and what they look for in a city. And that's okay. I'm not here to say I'm right, you're wrong. This is just my experience. Florence, I'm putting below Amsterdam, but above Rome. Actually, I'm gonna put Rome in C tier below Dusseldorf. I think I enjoy Dusseldorf more than I did Rome. And I'm just, look, this looks like I'm an Italy hater. I love you, Italy. I need to go, I wanna go to Sicily. I would love to go to the Alps. These are just places I've been so far. Yeah, it was fine. I, if I was to live anywhere out of those, I would definitely choose Florence. It's just way prettier. I really like the main downtown area there. All right, so this majority of the European cities I did first. I'm kind of going in order here. So after I did those European cities, I went to Asia and I started in Bangkok. And guys, if you know me, I think you know what I'm about to say. Bangkok is the best city on earth. I've had so many good experiences in Bangkok. The rich culture, being by beach, being by mountains, public transportation is amazing. The BTS is amazing. The food, the best food I've ever had. Actually, that's not true. The second best food I've ever had. It's just like one of those mega cities where it's just like, I want to live there. My goal in life is to eventually move to Bangkok full time. I've probably been there for 90, approximately like almost 90 days of my eight month period. So about three months. Because every time I would leave, I would just want to go back. The weather was amazing. I love it. It was like 30, 32 celsius it's like 90 fahrenheit people are like that's too hot i love bangkok walking out and seeing and being a part of like that thai culture and having the hospitality the generosity of people everything about bangkok is just amazing i got addicted to the bikes you could grab like a, a bike as a taxi and just get on the back of someone's bike and just like go wherever and just like through traffic weaving through traffic i was here to death at first but that was freaking amazing they also have the best mcdonald's of any place because they have cheese sticks shots mcdonald's in, in bangkok or thailand they have cheese sticks and you can only have one s tier in my opinion i hate tier list that i have like 14 S tiers. There can be 14 S tiers. There can only be one S tier. Bangkok is my S tier. That's where I would see myself for a very long time. So many things to do. You could you could live in Bangkok for your whole life and not even see a percentage of it. It's so amazing. You know the malls there, the mall culture. If you guys want me to do like a full video on like I have so many different videos from Bangkok I never posted, just like recording. So if you guys are interested in like maybe more Bangkok videos, I'm happy to talk about it. But in general, it's just like the best city I've ever been to, and I could name a million reasons. S tier. Then we have Chiang Mai, another big city in, in Thailand. I'm giving that A tier, guys. I think you might see a trend here. Southeast. Asia, I think is just my favorite place on earth. The street food, the vendors. Um, Chiang Mai is not as developed as a city or not as a, like a mega city. It's still very developed. Really, really good food. You're surrounded by the mountains. You can go, you know, west and go into different villages and the hills, things like that and see tons. Oh, also Thai tea, boom. Fried rice, boom. I love Thailand, man. But if I do go back to Thailand, I'm making it an emphasis to learn the language. Or I guess when I go back, I'm manifesting. I will have to take Thai classes as you should if you want to respect someone's culture and country. I think it's only appropriate that you should at least try to learn the language. Um, I went back to Thailand after all these too because I just missed Bangkok so much. What else we got? We went to Lao with Kodiak. We did Vientiane. Vientiane is where we met the monk. You guys saw the monk video. This is my first time that I speak to Western people. But the English is very good. Learn by myself on YouTube. You're so, very well. Yeah, I, I don't want to show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So that alone should be like making an S tier because that's just really cool. But I think Vientiane as a city, and if I'm being very critical, it's gonna be low C tier. Ooh, I don't know if I like where Florence is now, actually. I'm putting Florence down here above Rome. Where about the dope? Yeah, I think, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So this is Naples, Venice. So Vientiane, I'm going to put above Dusseldorf in the C tier. Vientiane, we did for like three days. And after one day, you kind of feel like you saw everything. There's a night market there that's really cool. We went north. That's where we saw the temple and the monk. I don't know if I could do Vientiane for longer than a week just because it's kind of quiet and there's less to do. It's not really as built up. Something really interesting about Lao is that it's a lot of Chinese business. So you'll see if you're in Lao or Vientiane specifically, you'll see tons of different Chinese license plates and things like that, which is really interesting. I'm glad we saw the monk because he really changed my outlook on Vientiane. Lao is amazing amazing country. But in terms of Vientiane itself, which is the capital, I'm putting it in high C tier. After Vientiane, we took the we took the high speed train, put a photo or maybe a video of the high speed train. Someone can fact check me, but I think it's the fastest high speed train in Southeast Asia in Lao. I think it was funded by China, but it was super, super developed high speed train in, in Lao, which is really cool. Definitely recommend it. We got Vang Vieng. Um, I'm putting Vang Vieng in low B tier. You guys know the limestone hills. Actually, man, it's so tough because it's so beautiful. I'm putting it above Funchal or above Madeira. Is that right? I think that's right. Asia just immediately has kind of an upper hand. Bing Bing is 95% tourism, unfortunately, or at least in the central. Um, everything is kind of pandered towards tourism, which 
you know. Obviously the more local spots are cool, but the beautiful limestone hills you have, solid food, me and Kodek did a hike, it's beautiful. Madeira and Bing Bing are the two most beautiful places I've been to. Bing Bing was where also we convinced the sky to drive us like two hours west to go to the road I've always wanted to go to. So Bing Bing has my heart there because that's where we got to my road that I've been wanting to go to for so long. I actually vlogged the whole thing. If you guys are interested in seeing more of that, uh, I guess that could be interesting too. And we got Luang Prabang. This is like the tiger, the, the Lao tiger, an inside geo guesser joke from Luang Prabang. I'm putting it A tier. If I was to live anywhere in Lao, I would want to live in Luang Prabang. Super historic, tons of really, really cool buildings. It's right on the river. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Architecture everywhere. One night in Luang Prabang, uh, me and Kodak just walk in like the night market. It's like probably like 13 year old came up to us and he was asking if he could practice his English. And of course me and Kodak were like, yeah, of course. We started talking eventually, you know, we talked for like 30 seconds and then we were like, hey, you just like wanna go grab some dinner real quick, like down the street. So we went to like this local, like this night market, like place where you can just like buy food. We sat there and talked to him for like probably 30, 45 minutes. A couple fans came up to me and they like mentioned there was a bowling alley in Luang Prabang North a bit. And it's like the place to be at night for like the Westerners, I guess, in Lao. I looked to, uh, I think his name is Baoku. It was like the 13 year old that we met. And after we talked to him for like an hour, we're like, hey, have you ever been bowling? And he was like, no. Keep in mind, he's, he said he was only practicing English for two months and he was able to completely hold a conversation. And so it was super, super, super cool. So shout out to that guy. And he would, he just goes out there and finds people to talk to every day, practice his English, so inspiring. But anyways, we took him bowling. I kid you not, we found like the next child prodigy. This guy beat Kodiak on the first game. I'm sorry, Kodiak, for putting you out there. But listen, he's, he's never been bowling in his life. And he out here is like, he got like a 90, his like first ever bowling. You're like, he might have broken the 100. Just like, bro. And it was really, really wholesome. I, I think he ended up posting a TikTok that I found of me and Kodiak and like the caption was like I met friends I'm having a great night or something like that and it was like wow this is the most wholesome thing ever moments like that always makes places way more special when you have like the, those types of memories attached to it but yeah so Lao has a lot of really really cool interesting people like that and also I will say I think Laotian people are the nicest people I've ever met like across the board Southeast Asia in general has super super kind people but Laotians insane courtesy I remember when me and Kodiak went west that one day we were trying to get this good view of this mountain on this like near this road we went to it was like two hours west in the middle of nowhere there's this like this old couple sitting in their house just like eating uh lunch and they like waved at us to come in to look at the mountains because they could tell we wanted to, to look at them then they just like invited us to eat lunch we just like sat there for a minute didn't speak a lick of english but most welcoming people ever so so kind stories like that early everywhere in laos so i would love to go back the one thing about Laos though is that i would recommend if you're going to laos you should go during the wet season where it's way more green and you get more of kind of like the green natural landscape we went during the dry season and so you can tell like maybe in some photos it's like super it looks like it's like a netflix movie in like mexico with like the tint of the videos but yeah, I highly highly recommend going to Laos if you guys ne have never been it's absolutely beautiful the people there are so kind so welcoming and even with the train that they've built now it's super easy to go from place to place so Luang Prabang in my A tier here with Chiang Mai and Sevilla great internet too okay this is where it might get controversial we got KL in Malaysia ah uh, I will say this, the best food I've ever had is in KL. I was there for a week. I booked a month's stay, but I ended up just leaving because I wasn't really enjoying my time there. It's similar to Bangkok, but the thing about KL that kind of threw me for a loop was that it was so modernized that it felt like it had lost some of its core culture. And that, that was interesting to me. And um, this is just my observation, but it didn't really feel like I was in Asia. But yeah, I'm um, putting KL. It's a C or D, guys. It's a C or D. I don't want this to affect someone else's opinion on it either. Like, this is just my experience. I'm sure I could go back and have an S tier experience. Sometimes places just, they don't really work out. I it might go in D tier. Nope, there were some monkeys there. I really enjoyed watching the monkeys. I'm gonna go in between Florence and Rome here. Yeah, guys, I did get to see some monkeys. And it's also probably the cheapest agency I've been to. It's way cheaper than Bangkok, to be honest. But yeah, I'm putting a mid C tier or low C tier there, um, which maybe throws you guys for a loop. But yeah, it's just, again, it's just like something about it. It just felt my energy was off there, after, I think does have the best food. I would go back just for the food. The one thing I will say about the Malaysian food though is that it's so spicy and my spice tolerance is so bad, but I like to at least challenge my spice because I feel like you can't get better spice tolerance if you don't try and get more spicy things. You know, you, you can't stay without a spice tolerance forever if you, if you never eat spice. You have to at least try spicy. So I went to like this place, it was like chicken. It sounds like, give me the spiciest chicken sandwich you have, right? And I, I take it and I sit down. And everyone around me is like eating it completely okay, sitting fine and dandy. And I remember, oh, this will be, this will be a walk in the park. All these other Malaysians around me are, are, are with it, I'm like, I can I can do this, right? And so I sit down, I get my sandwich, I'm looking at it, it's like freaking massive red sandwich, right? We gotta go all in. And my spice tolerance is so bad. Like I've had fried rice that I thought was spicy before. And so I just take a big bite. Dude, 
the biggest regret of my life and the most probably one of the top three most embarrassing things ever because I sat there like coughing my eyes out for like 20 minutes everyone's just staring at me and like bro it's not that hot I had to like speed up and like go to the trash can it was such a bad look dude it's so embarrassing I think I took a video of it but dude like it was freaking hot but Malaysian food is so good I would go back to Malaysia just for their food it may be a little too spicy for me but that's okay because it's so freaking good but yeah I'm not ever gonna have that that sandwich again never gonna have that sandwich again so after I did Malaysia I went to Bali I did Changu and Ubud. Changu, I like the beach. I'm putting it low B tier. I pretty much just used my time in Changu as like a vacation just to relax, to be honest. And I didn't really work as much. I got a nice little bronze, but there it does still feel like there's there's culture. I'm putting them both like like this. I like the beach more, so I give that. But uh, they're both beautiful in their own distinct ways. All right, and then I did my Australian tour. So I did Sydney, Melbourne, and Adelaide. All right, let's just rank the Australian cities I've been to. With all due respect, this is between Sydney and Melbourne. Adelaide's cool, too small for me. It does have an Oscar, so shout out to Zigzag. That's gonna be a lot. Let's go all in. It's better than Dusseldorf, so I'm gonna put high seat here. I'm really liking this list. This is looking really good. Okay, and then I have Melbourne. I went to an AFL game in Adelaide, and it was super, super cool. I also went to one in Melbourne. I will say that the AFL experience in Melbourne was a lot cooler. <laughs> I went to that big stadium. I forgot what it's called. Someone knows will know what it's called. AFL fans are crazy. Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. I'm gonna put Melbourne below Amsterdam, above Bali. Yeah, Melbourne's cool because it has kind of like that, it felt more younger, hip. And then I'm gonna do Sydney. Sydney's gonna go, does it go above Finchow? No, it doesn't. That's fair. Sydney I loved, Bondi Beach was beautiful. I just really like Sydney. There's one neighborhood in Sydney I was at all the time. I forgot what it's called. King Street? Man, I lived on this like one street. I don't know, I think it was called King Street. Man, that was like the coolest little street ever. Tons of really cool people in Sydney. I think, I think that's that. And then I just flew from London to New York. So I was in London for five days, four or five days. And guys, if you guys know me, I've done nothing but just on England. Oh, I did not mean to put it. That's just, that's just funny. I didn't mean to put it. I've done nothing but on England for like my whole entire time of being on the internet. But my first experience in London was actually pretty good, guys. London exceeded my expectations by a lot. Super, super walkable. But not very car dependent. Good public transportation. The black taxis are great. People there are great. I'm gonna put it above Sydney and above uh, Madeira. No, oh, yeah. Madeira was too car dependent. Oh my God, guys, I forgot to mention. I like crashed my car so many times in Madeira. I was like trying to go downtown one time to get a haircut, right? The streets are like this small, bro. And I'm like trying to like turn my car and it's like mini fucking alley. And all I hear is Oh my God, it's so awkward because there's like 14 people looking at me while I'm just like scraping the side of the car. And they're like, no, turn back, turn back. And I'm like trying to turn the, dude, I'm not used to small road, like small alleys like that. Like I don't know how to turn when it's like a small alley like that. I did have insurance though, so it's okay. It's just a skill issue on my end. All right, so anyways, this was a super, super brief rundown of my past eight months. I could probably talk about each one of these countries and my full experiences on them in depth. There's so many things, so many fun stories. I didn't get to say at all. Southeast Asia, Thailand, Laos. That's my goal. It's my kind of my goal to move out there honestly every time i leave thailand i want to go back i really 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 enjoyed bangkok so if anyone hasn't been to bangkok or chiang mai i never made it to phuket or the south southern islands yet but um let me know like is this a w list or an l list i'm not even sure to be honest but it's my list and that's okay because this is my opinion and i'm sorry if you're italy i didn't mean to dislike italy i'm sure italy's great but southeast asia is, uh, is my favorite place just to just to go through again we got bangkok chiang mai CVS spain luang prabang ding ving london dira sydney amsterdam melbourne changu ubud vientiane adelaide dusseldorf florence kl rome naples and venice not too bad let me know where i should go next i have the whole rest of the year to decide where to be if you guys have any things based off what you've gathered from my very interesting opinions on this let me know places that you think i might like or might dislike and i'll see you guys next time